Hey, good afternoon, Team Minot. I'm Second Lieutenant Meekin from the 5th Logistics Readiness Squadron, and today I'm joined by Staff Sergeant Moreau and Airman First Class Johnson. And these are both representatives from our TMO team, specifically the Personal Property Office. And every single year, we put a lot of work into making sure the thousands of members PCSing on and off the installation have everything that they need. Um, and we especially want to get ahead of that this year because we know that there's a lot of changing information and guidance as it relates to COVID-19. So hopefully you get some peace of mind from this and that you guys are all doing well um, and you guys see us as a resource that you can always reach out to um, and also get some tools in the, in the back of your pocket from this presentation um, on how to get those household goods moved, even though these are uncertain times. So what we're going to go over today is just some quick scenarios that are going to be briefed by Sergeant Moreau. And he's also going to brief the current guidance that we have as it relates to moving. Um, so we know that things aren't flowing quite as normal, but we want you to know which category you fall under and what you need to do to make sure that you still get where you need to go and that your stuff makes it there too. Um, we're going to have Airman Johnson break down what scheduling a household goods move looks like. And I think that what you guys will find if you don't know this already is that there are so many things that the member, him or herself can do on their own. And so that actually gives you guys a lot of power and a lot of autonomy um, to have control over your household goods moves um, with us being there to help along the way. Um, then we're gonna have Sergeant Moreau and Airman Johnson tag team some frequently asked questions, questions that we get every year around this time as well as COVID-19 related questions. And we're gonna walk you through our SharePoint as well. Um, so without further ado though, I'm gonna hand it off to you, Sergeant Moreau, just to kind of break down where members fall and what they need to know. Okay, so first off, um, if you're PCSing, call our office the second you get orders. Like you get the email that says, your orders have been populated in VMPF, you should, order should be loading and you'd already be on the phone with us. Um, that's our number there, 723-4191. And then some if-thens for uh, COVID-19. Um, if you schedule them, you, your move, and you haven't heard from your TSP, uh, your transportation service provider, um, or the packing process hasn't started yet, then your move is likely suspended or canceled if it's before the, uh, the stop movement of 30 June. But don't worry, uh, you can contact us. We'll schedule you a new pickup date for after the stop movement. And then if you have to PCS before 30 June, um, <clears throat> your leadership should tell you and help you uh, work through that process. Uh, and then you just call us and then we'll take the, uh, we'll make sure that you fall under the e exemptions that we'll go through later in the slide. Um, and then we'll schedule your household goods to be picked up before you leave. And then lastly, um, we kind of went through that already. If you fall under one of the 11 exemptions, um, you're not going to be affected by the stop movement at all. So you don't have to worry there. All right. And then we're not taking walk-in appointments at the moment. I know usually we do our one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling, but uh, all our uh, appointments are going to be either over the phone or brief you through email and we'll just go over questions that way. And then so current guidance that we actually got yesterday afternoon, <clears throat> there used to be only four exemptions, but now there's 11. So I'm just gonna touch on the, um, the ones that are probably most popular. So if, you're already, if the movers have already started packing up your items, you, you don't have to worry. It's not, they're not gonna come bring your stuff back. They're not gonna unpack your boxes. Your move is good to go. Um, uh, what else? Any, um, I think uh, the next slide. Yeah, retirees, separatees, and blue park shipments are unaffected as well. So if you're looking at getting out of the military, you'd, uh, you don't have to, you're not stuck here because of the of COVID-19. And then also any AETC moves, so tech schoolers, MTIs, um, MTLs, they're all unaffected by the stop movement as of yesterday afternoon. Any GFM moves and uh, the last one there, <clears throat> any, anybody who's deemed uh, mission essential, which again, your leadership will Help you get through that or let you know if you are mission, miss, mission essential and uh, any humanitarian moves are unaffected 
and any moves warranted due to extreme hardship. So those are the main things that we'll see in our office um, that are exempt from the stop movement. Yep. And then, so the way that go, sorry to interrupt you, Sergeant Moreau, is um, just so our members know, if you fall under one of those 11 categories, your leadership is going to generate documentation that we're then going to use to book your household goods exactly as we normally would. Um, so the only difference in this situation um, between our normal PCS season is just that there is a little bit of a, a tighter window in who gets to move and who doesn't. But once you overcome that step, they are booked exactly the same. Um, and we'll make sure all of these slides are on our SharePoint. So if you wanna go visit any of the links that we have embedded in here, you'll be able to access them that way. Kendenner, you're good. But, I mean, that's, that's all I have for the, uh, for the popular exemptions, so. Perfect, okay. So um, when scheduling your household goods move, of course you do need um, a official copy of orders. Uh, we cannot take any, any rips or anything like that. It does have to be a copy of orders because we do need that funding information off of those orders. So as soon as you get them, please, please get in contact with us. Like Sergeant Monroe said, that's the most important thing that you can do when it comes to your PCS move because you honestly can't do it without us. Um, after you get your orders and you get in contact with us, we will send you a personal property worksheet. Um, you can get it via email. Um, of course, we're not accepting any walk-ins, but if you're unable to receive it over email or anything like that, we do have some at our door on a table. You can come pick that up. Um, and after you get that and you fill it out accordingly, you will submit that with a copy of your orders to our personal property org box, which is personal property to at us.af.mail, of course. And then we will send you a briefing telling you all of your um, entitlements, tell you everything that goes on with your move to make sure that you understand all of the do's and don'ts of your move, okay? Um, we won't send you out there to the woods by yourself. Of course, we're gonna help you and walk you through this. If you have any questions, please give us a call back um, and we will help you out with this 100%. We're here for you guys and we don't want you guys to be worried or scared or feel as though you um, can't do this without anyone else. We're gonna be there for you, okay? Um, if you are doing the government assistant move and they do not contact you 15 days prior, please get in contact with us or get in contact with our GYPSO. They are um, some people that help us as well. Um, we look for them for guidance as you look to us. So just make sure you get in contact with one of us if you aren't contacted 15 days prior. What's really important, um, Airman Johnson, about the documents that we get back once we've started this process? Um, if they don't submit the documents back that we give them during their briefing, um, it's to, like not officially put into the system so your move isn't done. Um, so, for example, you're, if you're doing a PPM and you're 2278, if you do not submit that item back to us, we cannot submit that into the system for you and your move isn't complete. Exactly. So I think just to clear up any misconceptions, just because we've initiated the process internally, with the Minot um, Personal Property Office doesn't mean that the external partners that we work with have officially scheduled anything on their books, which is why it's really important. You, your exec, your family members, you guys are all on the same page, looking at the documents, signing them, sending them back, asking any questions that you have so that we can make sure that we're working with GYPSO, the Joint Personal Property Office, to actually get that confirmation and then, like Airman Johnson said, if you don't receive it, we can quickly act within that 15-day window to get it, to get it straight. Um, and it's much better to do that earlier than later, um, which is just something that we really have to foot stomp for our members that they have control over and that we can really help with. So we're going to look at the personal property worksheet now. If you just want to walk us through it, Airman Johnson, what places people usually stumble, what's important to know. Okay, um, so um, in the left corner, you have the customer information. Um, we try to have the members fill it out as thoroughly as possible, such as the social security number. We do like the last four of your social, but we would like for your whole social so that we can go into DPS and get that information put in for you. Um, put in your personal email address. If you aren't able to use your personal email address or you're not able to use your work email address, that's fine. We just need a way to contact you. This information is very important not only to you, but for us as well, so that we can get in contact with you when we need to, of course. Um, a common flaw that I see when people turn in their personal property worksheet is the destination address. If you don't have a destination address, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we do need at least a zip code of the area that you will be going to. We're not gonna be able to finish this process if we don't have that information. So it's, it's fine that you don't have that address. They are gonna give you a call when they're delivering your things if you're doing household goods move, asking you if you're in the local area. And if you have your address, then you can give it to them that way. 
you don't necessarily have to have a dab, but we do need an area in which you're going to put right there. Um, if you're doing a household goods move by itself, of course, you will fill out the household goods section and its total. The intrinsic emergency address, we need that information, whether it's for a PPM or a household goods move. This address is, um, if something's to happen to you, this is where they're going to send your things. This is who they're going to contact. So, of course, we need that information. It can't be where you live currently or um, anything like that. It has to be somebody, somebody else. It could be a family friend, a coworker, your your mom, dad, anybody. It just needs to be someone, you know? Um, for the special items, um, people do fill this out correctly. Um, they put their motorcycle information and um, firearm information in here. Just make sure that you put everything that you think is important to you because everything that's important to you is important to us, okay? Um, for the personal property move section, we normally never see any problems with this section. If you are doing a partial, please fill out both sections. A lot of people, I have questions about that a lot if I'm doing a partial. You do fill out both sections and we do need a digital um, signing or a handwritten signature from that. But there's not really any many, very many problems other than the in-transit emergency address and the destination address. Anything else here, Erin Johnson? Um, when you submit this um, personal property worksheet, you do have to attach your orders. Because again, we do need that funding information after there. If you just submit this and we don't have your orders, it's gonna be pretty hard for us to find your orders for you. You guys want to start with the FAQs? All right, I'll tackle the first one. So what <clears throat> a lot of different bases have um, talked about blackout dates. So we get asked if there's any blackout dates for the upcoming PCS season. So currently we don't have any blackout dates. Um, what some people consider a blackout date is like days where they cannot schedule their move. Um, as household goods are scheduled after the stop movement ends, uh, weekly carrier availability just depends on location, weight, and volume. And for volume, that's like the amount of customers that we get into our office or amount of emails we get. <clears throat> so it's not necessarily a blackout date. The, the carriers could be busy one day, but if you only have a thousand pound shipment, they could probably squeeze that in. Whereas if you're trying to ship eight to 10,000 pounds, it's gonna need, to, it's gonna take a few days. So your move may get pushed back a little bit or really you just kind of have to be flexible um, during the, uh, the peak move season. Um, if I have PCS orders and my report no later than date is for June 30th, can I still have my household goods move? Of course, um, as long as you fall under those 11 exemptions, you can still move your household goods. If not, you will work with your leadership um, to get that information needed for you to PCS if you're able to do it. All right, and then, <clears throat> so I have PCS orders and my report no later than date is after June 30th. Can I set up my shipment? You can. Uh, we have a lot of questions and a lot of people think that they can't actually contact us or set up their move until after the stop movement. Uh, we If you have orders and you're leaving and you know you're leaving after 30 June, please contact us so we can get your move set up as early as possible. If you're leaving after 30 June, um, the, the stop moving doesn't affect your move at all. Everything gets processed as normal. I just arrived on station and need my household goods delivered. Is this possible? Yes, all deliveries will continue as normal. You're already here and they're not gonna keep your things from you, of course. Um, you can't live in a house without anything. So of course they'll deliver your things. You would just have to get in contact with your moving company. All right, and then is my shipment still being picked up? So if you've been contacted by your moving company and they've already set up a uh, like a pre-move survey and they haven't called you back saying that they can't pick up your items, then your move has already been started and you have nothing to worry about. Your shipment will still be picked up. I need to change my pickup date. What do I do? If you've already been contacted by your TSP and or a moving company, you would just coordinate that through the TSP and the moving company. If not, we will um, guide you through our change of request form and we will get that sent up to our GIPSO. Um, but just make sure that you haven't been contacted by a mobile company or anything like that. We have this problem a lot sometimes. Um, but if you have, just contact it through them. Anything else that you want people to know about before we move on? Uh, if you do have, if you just got here and you do have stuff in non-temporary storage, we can also set those shipments up as well, wherever. I mean, because a lot of people, if you came from uh, Europe, you might have your, your non-temp storage uh, in like Virginia or something like that. We can still initiate those moves and get your non-temporary storage delivered to you. Awesome. Okay, so really quickly, I know that we touched on a lot of different areas. 
um, within the Minot TMO office and the personal property office, which falls under the TMO umbrella. This SharePoint that we have, I know a lot of units use these, is super helpful. Um, and hopefully you feel empowered to use some of the information that you have here and on the SharePoint itself um, to take control of your move during this crazy time. Um, so the link is embedded in this and it's, um, you can find it all over the place, but this is the home screen of the SharePoint. And you can see it to the left, all of those different links and resources that are available to you as the mover. When you scroll down a little on this page, you're gonna see this yellow bar um, which says attention customers, please click here to sign up for a household goods appointment. That will bring you to this next page, which has a calendar and shows all of the engagements that the personal property office is working on. So what you're gonna do, if you can look to the right in that tiny corner where it says add, you're gonna click add and it's gonna bring you to this um, sign up calendar new item and then following the hours that are available and they're right on that calendar screen. Um, you can pick a time that's open and schedule um, when you'd like to do your entitlement brief or just ask questions. Now it's important to keep in mind that we're not doing walk-in appointments right now, but this, this um, COVID-19 situation is hopefully temporary. Your Minot TMO office will be here for you forever. And so this resource will always be available to you. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that people knew that this was, this was online, easily accessible, um, and you can still use this if you'd like to do an over the phone appointment, things like that. Um, the last screen that I wanted to pull up is the personal property form screen. So right here, you're gonna see the updated personal property worksheet, which is editable. Um, that Airman Johnson walked you through. And then she also mentioned the shipment change request. Both of those are right there. So if you wanna look them over, start filling them out yourself, more power to you. Um, also something that's on here, if you look to the left under announcements, that's where we post our most recent guidance that we received. So if anything changes, you're gonna know when we know. Um, but that's all I have for the SharePoint. If you guys don't have anything else before we move on. I everything. So the only other links that we have um, is, of course, you guys already have the phone number for um, my TMO personal property office, which is 4191. And um, our friends at PA are updating that on the app so that you guys will have instant access to it via the directory. And of course, you can always email us too. Um, we have individuals who are on shift all the time. So even though we're in minimum manning, people will always be able to open the phone or open emails and answer the phone. Um, and then if you have really big picture questions, move.mil is a great place to look as well. Um, but like I said, we're always here to help and we know these are uncertain times. So please feel free to use us as a resource and reference these slides whenever possible. I know they're going out to the first sergeants today. Um, and I don't have anything else if you don't, Sergeant Moreau and Airman Johnson. No, I think we're good. Thanks so much for having us.